Hello, uh, today I will start our last uh, section, uh, which is Bayesian estimation. Uh, so far uh, you learned about the classical approach where our unknown parameter is uh, a fixed quantity, constant. Uh, in the classical approach we assume that uh, our unknown parameter is constant, fixed. It does not have a probability distribution. But in a Bayesian approach, um, uh, that parameter is also a random variable and it has a probability distribution. But uh, since we have only a uh, sample about x, we don't have any uh, sample information related to uh, the unknown parameter, uh, we have to use a different approach uh, to be able to estimate uh, unknown parameter using Bayesian approach. So we will see Bayesian uh, estimation and very simple ways to decide on the confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, but it's actually much more difficult to topic. I will just give you the simplest version of the hypothesis testing part. Um, it's actually sometimes nice technique, especially if you have small sample sizes. Uh, sample information is sometimes not enough ha have enough information to be able to estimate correctly the uh, unknown parameters. Uh, so using Bayesian approach um, gives good better results compared to classical approach. Uh, and also in the class I uh, mentioned about this m, &M experiment, I will show you uh, the um, our meeting time. Uh, that paper also to you, uh, unfortunately we couldn't do the experiment. We cannot actually uh, perform the experiment uh, in the class, um, but you will see how to conduct and uh, how uh, it will work and Bayesian approach gives better results compared to the classical approach. Um, so in the classical approach, the parameters we can have more than one uh, parameter, but I will explain everything based on just one on one parameter case. Theta is told to be um, unknown, so it's unknown, we try to estimate it, but it's a fixed quantity. Uh, then what we are doing, we are taking usually a random sample or a sample uh, is taken from, uh, from a population indexed by theta, but it's a fixed quantity constant. And based on just the observed values from the sample of this sample or random sample, we get some information the knowledge um, on about the value of theta is obtained. Okay, so this is the classical approach. So what we have in the Bayesian approach, uh, in the Bayesian approach, uh, theta is considered to be a random variable and it has a probability distribution considered to be to be a quantity whose variation can be described by a probability distribution, so it's a random variable. And this, um, this probability distribution at first called as the 
prior distribution. So it does not based on any sample information uh, distribution. And this is usually a subjective uh, probability. And mainly we are using expert knowledge here. So it is changes from person to person. Okay. Uh, and it's based on not the sample information because sample is for uh, we assume that our random sample is a random variable actually so we have random variables of size n mostly and we try to in classical approach we try to estimate the unknown parameter uh, theta but here theta is also unknown uh, unknown and it's a random variable based on the experimenters belief so it is subjective and is formulated uh, before the sample is taken before the data are seen okay then we are taking a sample Okay, so at the beginning we have to have some inform, uh, some knowledge, some information related to uh, the unknown parameter. Uh, it's the, uh, it's probabilistic uh, behavior um, set by some experimenter uh, or the previous knowledge. Uh, then we are taking the sample from a population of population. Again, indexed by uh, theta. Then, uh, using the sample information, we already have subjective information related to the um, probabilistic behavior of the unknown parameter theta. Uh, then we are taking a sample. Then we are updating the this, this uh, prior distribution uh, by the sample information. Oops. Okay, and then prior distribution is updated. Okay, um, updated with this simple in, uh, sample information. Oh, what's happening? Okay, then this updated uh, probability is called the posterior distribution. Okay, so when the prior distribution is updated by the sample information, it becomes a posterior distribution for theta. Posterior distribution of theta. Okay, uh, so using this posterior uh, distribution, we can um, do any estimation related to unknown parameter theta. So here, first of all, we assume that we have a distribution for theta. X is a random variable, and theta is in the parameter space again, and here. Um, I will do the calculations for one unknown parameter theta, but it can be generalized for uh, more than one uh, parameter case. Okay, so it's a single. So in this course, we will only see the single unknown parameter case. But can be... Generalize to several
parameters case data one. Okay. Okay, so we have we have uh, a prior distribution at the beginning, and we have to set it, or we have to uh, get information related to that using the prior previous information or the expert's knowledge. So we have the prior PDF of theta. Okay, so not x. It can be discrete or continuous. Okay. And this is decided um, before the sample is taken. Okay, uh, so usually we use H theta notation to represent the prior distribution. Okay, so this is the marginal um, PDF of and it involves a personal or subjective um, or subjective probability. Okay. Then we have a posterior PDF. Okay, so we have a posterior PDF of ah, uh, why this is happening? And usually we define it by k theta. So since the, this is a posterior distribution, and it is updated by the sample information. The sample information has to be given, so it's a conditional probability of theta. So we have first of all uh, a marginal distribution of theta without any knowledge from the sample. Then after taking a sample, we give it as a condition and update the prior distribution, okay? So it's a conditional distribution. And this ca this has to be uh, calculated after. Uh, sample is taken. Okay. So we have to uh, use some different notation here since we are talking about the conditional distributions. Remember, sometimes we are using PDF as f of x. Sometimes we are just writing it this way. Or sometimes we can write it this way. Okay, so basically all the same. Uh, just the meaning is a bit different. So this is just the PDF of um, x. Ah. Uh. This is also uh, the PDF of X, but now we have a given information, given theta. Basically, they are the same, but since we work, have to work with the conditional distribution to be able to find the posterior distribution, so it's helpful to use this notation, conditional on theta notation uh, in the PDF. Then let's define the likelihood function uh, based on that. So, you know, um, mathematically we can calculate the um, likelihood function, although the meanings are different, uh, using the joint distribution of sample given theta. This also can be written as f of, f of x, x1 to xn given theta. And for a random sample, this can be just... Uh, x1 given theta and all the multiplication x n given theta okay so we can define our likelihood function like that then how can we find the uh, posterior distribution just focus on the um, the form that we have for the posterior distribution so it is a conditional pdf of theta given sample information basically we are use we will just use the um, conditional distribution then the posterior uh, PDF of theta 
So basically we are using base uh, theorem here. Okay, so this is the um, conditional PDF of theta given x1 equals lowercase x1 dot dot xn equals lowercase xn. So then using the uh, general notation, so f of, uh, so this can be uh, written as x1 xn joint distribution of all over the given information. Okay, then write the numerator uh, using a um, using a conditional uh, behavior. So x1 to xn given theta times the marginal distribution of theta. Okay, so joint distribution of x1 to xn and theta can be written as uh, f of x1 to xn given theta times, so this is general Bayes theorem. Then we can also define the uh, numerator, the denominator part as the same conditional probability but now over the all parameter space. So x1 to xn given theta times a theta d theta. Okay. Okay, so this is the conditional distribution of a theta given sample. So this is the posterior distribution. How we will find the posterior distribution. So remember uh, the Bayes theorem. So how can we find for example um, are the um, how can we find the probability of A given uh, B. So basically we are using the same approach here. So A given B can be calculated as the number probability of actually A and B over probability of B. So this is the general condition that we have, remember. Then uh, how can we define define the numerator uh, part by using the um, other way condition? Remember probability that b given a probability of a and probability of b. And if you have several events a one to a n, let's say, um, so how can we find just uh, a one to a and case partition samples. For example, probability that A1 given B can be calculated as probability that B given A1, probability that A1 over sum of all I from F. Sorry about that, I don't know why this is happening. And probability that B given AI, probability of AI. So basically, in the posterior distribution, we are using the same logic. Uh, so here, I, I assume that theta is a continuous random variable, so I use uh, an integral sign, but it can be discrete, like uh, the Bayes theorem, then you have to use the sum. So basically, the formulas are the same. So instead of B, I, we have the sample information. Instead of A, we have the prior information, so it's already given to us. Remember, everything is the same, actually. Um, but here we are using a sample information and unknown uh, theta case and not s specific events. Okay, then, uh, so this is basically the whole formula that we can, that we will use actually, okay? But there is a simplification um, uh, in the calculation. So if, if you want, you can use this approach, but usually uh, the denominator part 
uh, calculation of the denominator part is a bit, you know, uh, it's not complicated, but it's mathematically hard kind of, uh, so or not say hard, but it is long to get the result. So basically, it's just a constant, as you can see. Okay, so it will be, uh, it, it's it's just a constant when you when we take the integral with respect to theta. So then, uh, what we can do, if we have the good knowledge about the statistical distributions, okay, then instead of using the actual direct uh, formula, we can uh, use simplification. How we can do that? Since we know that this denominator is constant, so what we will do is we can say that then R, posterior distribution uh, our posterior distribution theta given all the sample values are proportional to the numerator part okay so you don't have to do that math and everything will be uh, will be easy uh, if you know the statistical distributions well okay so this is a proportional to notation Okay, um, and if you have a uh, sufficient statistic, basically joint the uh, the conditional distribution of f of x given theta part can be written as the um, distribution of a sufficient statistic times the prior distribution. Okay, and then we have the proportional to const constant. And if you know the statistical distribution well, then without calculating that term, we can guess which distribution that we're talking about. So proportionality constant will be the uh, denominator part. Okay, so the conditional distribution x1 to x n given theta, h theta. So theta is the random variable, so we are taking the integral with respect to theta. So be careful about that. And it will be just a function of x1 to x n. Okay? Not a function of a random uh, so, uh, sample values only, let's say. Okay, and this can be determined. Can be determined uh, by uh, by comparing um, this part f of x one to x n given theta h theta part with a known distribution okay uh, then how can we find uh, the expectation of theta then so after finding the defining the posterior distribution then the uh, oh, I don't have to touch the screen. <laughs> the mean of the posterior will be then the expectation of theta given the sample information xn. So if for a discrete case, for a continuous case, we are using this, you know, if it is a discrete case, you are using summation and the posterior distribution so that's easy to find so be careful about this theta okay um, then we can find the uh, variance of the uh, theta median of the theta whatever that we want we can calculate it actually all the uh, percentiles uh, quartiles and anything that we want uh, can be calculated okay uh, Let's see. Okay. Um, before, uh, let's check uh, my notes. So I will explain this later. Okay. Um, so I will continue with the uh, examples and also um, conjugate family priors and concept of loss and risk functions um, uh, in the next part of these slides if i go uh, keep going then i have some problems in when, when i upload the videos in the youtube sorry about that so i will continue uh, bye